Hello, my name is Michael Gerardo. We are here in Swansea University to demonstrate how cross-flow membrane filtration works. Let's look at a brief list of possible applications of cross-flow microfiltration. We have here a small-scale single-pump microfiltration cross-flow system currently being used for the harvest of microalgae. But first things first, let's look at what membrane filtration is all about. Filtration is used for the separation of solids from fluids by interposing a medium through which only the fluid can pass. Oversized solids in the fluid are retained, but the separation is not complete. Solids will be contaminated with some fluid and filtrate will contain fine particles, depending on the pore size and filter thickness. In dead-end filtration, the feed flow is perpendicular to the membrane. However, in cross-flow, the feed is parallel to the membrane and the permeate flow flows through the membrane pores in a cross-flow mode. Cross-flow filtration minimizes the buildup of cake. Essentially, filtration is like a sieving process in which particles are separated based on their size. But what happens when the pores of the membrane and the particles become increasingly smaller? Let's look at the following diagram that relates the different membrane technologies to the particle sizes. This diagram shows the relation between particle size and the different membrane technologies. As you can see, algae falls under the microfiltration category. As the feed passes through the membrane fibers, the depression differential on the membrane forces the smaller particles like salt and water on a cross-flow mode through the membrane pores. This then exits through the permeate line. Infiltration, like in any other separation process, the control of the operating parameters is very important. Parameters such as temperature, concentration and pressure are vital for optimal separation processes. Firstly, liquids at a higher temperature are typically less viscous, which eases the pumping and filtration requirements, leading to higher flux. However, high temperatures can spoil the product or even ruin the membrane. Check the characteristics of your product and membrane temperature tolerance. Secondly, in terms of concentration, it is important to avoid concentration gradients. If the volume to be processed is higher than the capacity of the system, keep the feed tank full until all the volume is processed. Logically, higher concentration will create lower fluxes and longer operation times. Typically, this system can be used for suspension with up to 20% solids. However, a more conservative approach is recommended. Maximum 15% solids should be used. Thirdly, probably the most important parameter in filtration is pressure, transmembrane pressure. Pressure drives the fluid around and out of the system. Even though higher pressures result in high flux, this is not linear after a certain level. There is also a transmembrane pressure allowance specific to every membrane unit and type. Most importantly, the absolute pressure on the membrane outlet can never be the same as a pressure in the inlet. Otherwise, there won't be any flow. These considerations are paramount for the establishment of an optimal filtration process, which minimizes the loss of flux due to membrane fouling. Typically, membrane fouling is due to particle deposition on the membrane surface, named cake. However, this is not always the case, since proteins and sugars can also absorb onto the membrane surface and hinder the filtration process. In the harvesting of microalgae, it is said that extracellular matter is the main cause of membrane fouling. In some processes, the process engineer opts for increasing the transmembrane pressure to compensate the loss of flux due to membrane fouling. This leads to much necessary backflush steps which dislodges the particles deposited on the membrane surface and pores. Now that we know a little bit more about membrane filtration, let's see how we can operate this small-scale cross-flow microfiltration system using algae. Hygienic stainless steel fittings are used and allow customization of the rig. A centrifugal pump provides flow around the loop and there is a membrane cartridge with the 0.2 micron pore size. A pressure gauge reads the membrane outlet and a valve regulates that pressure. There is also a drainage point to collect the final concentrated product. Maximum capacity is 20 liters. 
The minimum volume is roughly one liter due to suction of air into the system and consequent cavitation of the pump. As the suspension recirculates in the system, water and salts are driven out of the system whilst the microalgae is retained. The permeate can be collected or directed to waste and the process can be named dewatering because of that. Let's see a time lapse of the process. After completion of the filtration process, we have collected the concentrate through the drainage point. Here we can see the different fractions collected from our filtration process. We have our initial suspension of microalgae, our permeate collected, and the final concentrated microalgae. And now for the cleaning. Good maintenance practices are vital to keep the membrane in good condition. After initial rinse, typically flushing the system with clean hot water is sufficient. However, due to particle absorption, sodium hydroxide at pH 12 or sodium hypochlorite may be used. This is applicable for this membrane only due to its chemical compatibility. Circulate the cleaning fluid on a closed loop for at least one hour. In the end, flush with clean water. In case of using sodium hypochlorite, Please note that the system can only tolerate 100 parts per million of chlorine on a continuous mode. Sometimes the membrane might be extremely fouled and the cake layer form will not wash easily. A backwash of the membrane typically dislodges the cake by reversing the direction of the permeate flow. Water is flushed on reverse mode on the permeate line and while blocking the other permeate outlet. The storage of the membrane can be done in situ in the filtration rig. The usage of sodium hydroxide up to pH 12 or sodium hypochlorite between 10 and 20 ppm is recommended. According to the manufacturer, dry storage is possible for long periods of time. However, the regeneration of the fibers has to be done for one hour with 70% ethanol. After that, clean thoroughly with water.